Friday, August 5th, 2023. And the world is headed for a massive change in the world financial system. We are going to the quantum financial system and there's nothing that we can do to stop it. We are going to the quantum financial system. Money is gonna move as fast as an email. We will have central bank digital currencies. Everything will be tokenized on the blockchain. We will use apps and um, all our services will be done through Interledger protocol. And a lot of things are gonna come through this using blockchain and using cryptocurrency. And I think that we have to open our perspectives about this because we've had very narrow perspectives. So I'm coming from the other direction of that because all we hear is that we're gonna be controlled. We're going to be you know, lorded over. They're gonna shut down our banking. And if you think about it, they could have done all of that. They could shut off our internet. They could shut off our phones. They have control of all these devices. So we know that if we study this elite system, we know that, and if we delve into like the esoteric and the occultism and the Masons and the elites and the Illuminati, they live by certain rules because actually they're under the... Um, <laughs> They're under the laws of God. And I know that's hard to believe, but they're under the universal spiritual law, karmic law. Um, they know that law, I think, better than most everyday people. And we're entering into a time where there's going to be a rebalancing in the earth. And I've talked about this many times in my videos about the financial system and how suppressed nations, third world nations are going to be, who have been squashed and brought low will be brought up higher. And how America who has been up here will be brought lower. And if we just speaking in very simple terms, that's really what we are gonna see happen. Yes, we're seeing an elimination of the middle class, and some of that is also rebalancing wealth. We're also seeing a wealth transfer from the baby boomers um, and uh, a deterioration of the wealth, I believe, of that generation being washed away because of all the debt that has been accumulated by that generation. Um, I spoke about America going, we're in the last 10 years, the last five years, five, six years of the last 20 year part of the cycle of the fourth turning of America. So we're in that last of the last, we're in the end of the end. And in the end of the end, um, that generation, which is now the elderly, um, 70s to 80s are, they were the first generation, the first turning. Um, after the, the war, the world war, when the dollar, you know, gold was traded in for dollars and people that were born in the 40s um, were given new opportunities. Um, I'm not saying that they didn't have any hardships, but the hardships were different for the generations that followed and the generation that's, that are alive today. So the children of the 80s to 2008 really um, are probably, I'm seeing my generation being awakened and that generation is called the awakened. <laughs> that, that period of time is called the awakening, which is I find really interesting. Those in my age bracket, are going through the most massive awakening. It's almost like those who are older can't grasp it because the mindsets are set. And those who are younger didn't have the opportunity to have their mindsets ingrained the way ours were, but we're, our minds are being opened. We're in an awakening. Those who are in their 40s and 50s are in a grand awakening. 
those who are in their 20s and 30s or yeah 20s and 30s those are going to be those who um are going to be problem solvers and are going to go through a massive period of transformation i believe and then the artists and the creative ones will follow because they will have it more easy but um we are going to a quantum financial system and the whole world will be networked onto this system, onto a unified ledger. Um, money will move like email. It is very archaic, the system that we're on right now. Um, it's funny when we think about it, money will move like email. And, and most of us who say that are like, that'd be great if I had some money <laughs> to move that fast. But there are many people right now capitalizing and delving into researching where the financial system is going so that they can strategically take advantage of the knowledge they're gaining. So to perhaps gain some wisdom and make radical moves to be prepared for the changes that are coming rather than to stand in, in quicksand or stand in cement shoes and say, I don't like what's happening. This is wrong. All I can see is this perspective and they better not do this to us. And I'm not going to do anything with my assets. I'm just going to stay where I am and scream about it and be a victim. And there's a large company of people who are awakening, realizing that if we don't allow our consciousness to be raised to a place where we no longer see things as happening to us and we let our soul be renewed and healed and let our minds be renewed and raised into the mind of Christ, into the higher mind, that I am not a victim. God is in control. I see people who are not Christian, who don't even speak about God, and yet they see the universe and the way that its laws are set up, that they are not a victim, that there is a higher power in control so that everything that has happened to them is meant for their good. And they are meant to change and transform through it. And to me, that is walking with God, whether they use the word God, they use the word source, but they are working, they are moving and they are living through the higher mind. And as long as we stay in the victim mentality, and I've talked about this before because I'm praying about this myself too, um, and bringing this before God in prayer, but as long as we become the victim all the time and everything happens to us and you know, whether it's the elites did this to us, the world system did this to us, my mother did this to me, my friend did this to me, everybody did this to me and feel bad for me. Things happen, of course, there's suffering in life, there's horrible things in life, there's pain in life, there's trauma. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there does come a time as we process through our grief or what has happened to us and we begin to gain a higher mind. And if we truly are able to come into the love that God has for us, the love that source has for us, that that love lives in us. That unconditional love actually is deposited in us when we incarnate. It's part of who we are. It's in our breath. It's in our life force. It's in our prana. It's living in our body. That we then can pray that our mind, because it's our mind that hinders us. It's the mind that lives in hell and causes the body to there then follow because the body follows the mind. The tongue follows the mind. I was talking about the tongue the other day, and I do love how the Bible speaks about the tongue as the most wicked member of the body. It does more, more um, destruction than anything in the world, the tongue. Um, but all that to say that our bodies are meant to be living temples of the Holy Spirit, to live in heaven and to bring heaven because heaven is in us, the kingdom is in us to earth and to, and if somebody's going through a hard time, then we come alongside of them and we support them and we walk through it with them and we pray for them and we, you know, encourage them and we persevere with them. And then if we're walking through the hard time, somebody's there for us, we all have a turn. But to come out of that victim mentality of this happened to me and everything just happens to me, I'm just a victim all the time. 
we will stay in realms of hell. We will stay in the lower realms. So I'm saying this in regards to the financial system because there will be many who will say this happened to me and this happened to us and this happened to America and they did this to us and now look where we are. But we don't have to live that way. Because if we truly, truly believe, okay, have the faith, we can see in the spirit, we can see in the unseen realms that all the quantum happens, right? And God is in control and he allows it. Then we know somehow heaven is behind, heaven is for us. And we can surrender to those quantum laws and we can find the will of God in that and we can find the path of transformation. And the path of evolving into moving into Christ out of the ego in this world. That really is the path. And so I talk about the financial system and how the quantum financial system is coming. And it can come through many different events, but it's happening before our eyes. And I don't believe a lot of people are seeing it. We're blind to it because we don't want to see it. And when we refuse to see, we can trick our, our minds can trick us into believing that it's not happening, but it's happening. And we will go to a quantum financial system and we're already, it's already prepared. It's working. It's just got to, the world events just have to play out. The script has to play out. And so we need to be vigilant, awake, prayerful, asking God to help us to understand wisdom and insight into having a perspective from God's point of view, from heaven's point of view, if God's allowing this all to happen, okay, God, what is your perspective on this? Let me see it from the other guy's shoes. Let me see it from a different perspective. What do you want to do in me? What do you want to do in America? What do you want to do in my region? What is my part in that? Why am I here on this earth at this time? One of the greatest things that God ever allowed me to do, truly, I mean this with all of my heart, was to meet an astrologer, to make an appointment to have my astrology chart read. And I've shared this before many times, but the more I see, what's happening in the world and the church's perspective, finger pointing, judging, how will we ever, ever go and share the love of God if we continue to judge and condemn instead of love? And the transformation that came through my life through that connection has changed the trajectory of, of, the trajectory of my life, my soul, my mind and my path forever. And that has rippled out in every direction. And I am forever grateful. God was already delivering me out of religion before I met this person, but my interaction, my connections with that person caused an acceleration of that deliverance to happen for me. And I am forever grateful. And I remember one day this person said to me, um, you know, and I was sharing whatever, the love of God in some way with this person when I first met them. And they said, if all these people are in churches that know this love of God, why didn't anyone ever come to me and share this love with me? And it broke my heart because I knew in my heart that anybody who was a churchgoer from where I came from was going to point a finger at a person like this, judge them, condemn them before they even knew them, and never sit at a table with a person that was an astrologer. Who will go to the drag queens? Who will go to the broken? What I realized was that 
through my connection to this person, God wanted to give me the kingdom. God wanted to look to deliver me. God wanted to make me see. God wanted to remove my blindness. God wanted to heal parts of me that were toxic, codependent, unhealed. God wanted to show me a whole new community of people who prayed with such purity, simplicity, depth. They didn't speak Christianese. They didn't even judge people in the church. They didn't know, therefore they didn't judge. And I saw such stark contrast because I had learned so much judgment in the church about those I didn't know, those I didn't understand. And it broke my heart over and over and over again. And the more that we see the world grow darker, the more we should pray, we need to pray. The more I pray for eyes to see, not only the depth of my own soul's reality, my own sin, my own judgment, my own projections, my own iniquity but that I would see the love God has for me in my sin, that I may see others prophetically through the eyes of love and embrace everyone, wherever they are, the way God embraces me. The blindness of the Pharisee is shocking. And the Pharisee is the ego, but there is a religious Pharisee that God is exposing right now. Not for shame, for deliverance. And I know I got off the financial system, but it's all about this rigid mindset that we have in the church about so many different topics and so many different issues and so many different things. And there's a humbling that's coming. There's such a wave, a tidal wave of humbling that is coming. And all I can say is, I feel the Holy Spirit is saying, as that wave comes, get down, get down low. Pray for eyes to see. Get ready because it's going to shock you. It's going to deliver you. And when you get delivered, you will be eternally grateful. You will come deeper into my love and understanding of my love, healing in my love, perspective of my love. Judgment will fall away. And therefore, the judgments that you project will be released off of you as you let go of them. You also will be released from judgments. Pray for love. God is love. His heart is redemption for all. He wants us to love others as we love ourselves. And so if we could get to the root of that, that would be glorious. To come out of the ivory towers, the glass towers from where we throw stones, to get real and authentic. I experienced some of the most authentic retreats of my life with an astrologer and her friends, and some of my friends who are coming out of religion, some of the most powerful, authentic retreats. Because 
people got real. They were honest. They let go in the presence of God and in the presence of their brothers and sisters. Everybody was human and sat in the love of God and received where they were at. As I sat there, I longed and I wept for the church because I wanted the church to know what this was like so bad. And I had to let that go. But I wished the church could know what it was like, not just to experience that power and that authenticity, but to sit amongst those that I sat amongst because they're all those people out in the world that the church points a finger at and yet declares that they're gonna save the world. And that is cognitive dissonance. That is lie. And it must be exposed because that frequency, every lie is a low frequency. It's a hellish frequency. When we have a lie in us, it's a frequency of hell. A lie is a frequency of hell. And God has come to deliver us from hell. God has come to deliver us out of lie. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. And even the church must come into the truth, a greater truth. And now is that hour, if we are willing, if we cry out for it, if we seek it, it will come to us. Many will not. They will not choose to accept truth. Not in this lifetime. But many are being pulled through a veil of truth right now, a veil of consciousness into the higher mind, into a higher love, and they can't do anything to stop it. For this, I am deeply grateful. And my soul goes in that trajectory 